Good morning, and welcome to our daily devotions on this when, uh, Thursday, May 12th. Thursday, May 12th. Glad to have you here with us for a little time in our Lord's Word, in the God's Word, in the Scriptures, in the place where we find refreshment and strength and renewal each and every day. Yeah, sometimes even this guy says something worth listening to. Um, I have my Bible study up in Rhinelander at Grace Lodge today, so I have previously recorded this one for you. It's actually, it's actually Wednesday evening. I just finished Bible history class. We, we had enough time at the end of class, and the weather's so nice, we went outside and played Titus for a while. Titus, you say? What is that? Well, it's like playing horse with the basketball hoop, but instead of playing horse, you're playing Titus. Uh, or any other biblical name, because, you know, it's Bible history class. <laughs> so, uh, good morning. I'm glad you're here with us. I can't greet each of you individually, because I'm not here. Although, uh, if I have time before I take off, or as I'm driving north, or as I'm stopping up there, I may chime in and say hello to you in the text and the comments below. But, good morning. Glad you're taking this time to be in God's Word. Let's not mess around a whole lot. Bonnie's got spaghetti ready for me to eat shortly here. So let's get down to the brass tacks. Uh, if you have a Lutheran service book, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, you find it on page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, the morning order. And that's where we begin here today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, this Thursday, May 12th, the fourth Thursday, in the season of Easter. Psalm 17, verses 7 through 15. Psalm 17. Wondrously show your steadfast love, O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. From the wicked who do me violence, my deadly enemies who surround me, they close their hearts to pity, with their mouths they speak arrogantly. They now surrounded our they have now surrounded our steps, they have set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He is like a lion eager to tear, as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in this life. You fill their womb with treasure, they are satisfied with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Right there. Right there. The old wicked foe, he's like a lion eager to tear, a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront and subdue him. That's it. Deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, your word from men by your hand. You fill the womb with treasure. You fill their womb with treasure. They're satisfied. Their children get everything, but they have nothing. They have nothing. But as for me, I behold your I behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. The promise, the promise of eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's that's what that is for us right there. Right there. Continuing in the book of Leviticus today, <clears throat> chapter 17 now, verses 1 through 16. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the people of Israel, and say to them, This is the thing that the Lord has commanded. 
If any one of the house of Israel kills an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp, or kills it outside the camp and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to offer it as a gift to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, blood guilt shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. This is the end that the people of Israel may bring Wait a minute. This is to the end that the people of Israel may bring their sacrifices, that they sacrifice in the open field, that they may bring them to the Lord, to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and sacrifice them as sacrifices of peace offerings to the Lord. And the priest shall throw the blood on the altar of the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and burn the fat for a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So they shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices to goat demons, after whom they whore. This shall be a statute forever for them throughout their generations. And you shall say to them, Any one of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who sojourn among them, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice, and does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting to offer it to the Lord, that man shall be cut off from his people. If any one of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by the life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger who sojourns among you eat blood. Anyone also of the people of Israel, or of the strangers who sojourn among them, who takes in hunting any beast or bird that shall may be eaten, shall pour out its blood and cover it with earth. For the life of every creature is its blood, its blood is its life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off. And every person who eats what dies of itself or what is torn by beasts whether he is a native or a sojourner, shall wash his clothes and bathe, bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. Then he shall be clean. But if he does not wash them or bathe his flesh, he shall bear his iniquity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So for Israel, there is now one place of sacrifice the altar of the Lord at the tabernacle. They are not to take their goats or their ox or their lamb outside the camp or even inside the camp and sacrifice it even to the Lord because the practice has become to go after the gods around them and, and sacrifice to their gods. Um, and that's not what God wants. Our God is a jealous God. He doesn't suffer the worship, the praise, the sacrifices that belong to him to go anywhere else. For there is no other God before him. Uh, so he commands it. He makes it a command that the sacrifices are to be done there, nowhere else. Um, and, and that the, the blood of the sacrifice is to be poured out there on the altar of the Lord and the fat parts burnt on the offering. Um, no more sacrificing outside the, the tabernacle. And eventually the same law will apply to the, to the temple when, it's, when they arrive in, in uh, Israel and, and when Solomon builds the temple, temple in Jerusalem. Um, but for now, there at the tabernacle, at the tent of meeting, um, you are to bring your goat, uh, your lamb, your oxen uh, to, the, to the priests and they will make the sacrifice for you. That's the job of the priest, to make sacrifice for the people. Uh, sacrifices to gods. And anyone who does anything else, who does not bring it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, shall be cut off. If you're going to live, uh, if you're going to live within the confines of God's people, then you will live as God's people. Um, there's a, I suppose there's a comment that can be made here. 
in regard to how we view church in our Western civilization. Um, we, we quite often neglect an understanding of the sanctuary, that it is a place holy to the Lord. Um, yes, you can have worship without a building, without a place, without a defined location. Um, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am also. Um, as we gather together, that is the gathering of the body of Christ. That's the gathering of the people. But we have places set aside specifically for this. We can do it in other places, um, but not all places are church, right? That's That's the thing. That's the thing. These places that we call church, our sanctuaries, our, our uh, places where we go to worship, they have been consecrated like the tabernacle. They've been set aside for this purpose. They're not to be used for other things, and other places are not set aside for these things. You can have worship in other places, but when you have a church, when you have a sanctuary, why would you go anyplace else? Bring your offerings of prayer and praise and receive the gifts of God in that place, the place that's been consecrated for it, not in other places, so that you're sure that these that these offerings of praise and contrite heart and prayers are being offered to the one true God and not to false gods. I mean, you you can't have Christian worship in a synagogue. You can't have Christian worship in a, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what the, what the Muslim temples are. Um, but Christian worship belongs in a Christian space. We tend to think of it as we can do what we want wherever we want. But God has given us specific things and specific ways to do things. And that's what he's showing us here in Leviticus, that he's given us these gifts of, of liturgy and of location um, so that we have them for our benefit. It's for us. It's for you. It's not for God. God doesn't care. He knows and he is. But for us, we need a, a, a locale, a place. And then he goes into the... the, the, the um, statute against the eating of blood. Blood is life, right? If you take the blood out of a creature, it dies. The blood is the life of the creature. We say bleed to death for a reason. Um, and so it is forbidden to eat the blood. Um, now, these things have been passed over in the new laws, and yet this is important because blood is used for the atonement of sin specifically, and blood is set apart by God as something, again, special and precious. He has a use for it. If you kill an animal in the field, a bird or a other animal to eat, then you are to drain its blood out there in the wilderness and cover it over with dirt. Right? Um, if you... Uh, sacrifice blood. It is to be used for the atonement. Um, and you are to drain the blood from the animal before you eat it. Um, this is a statute uh, for the people. Anyone who eats it again is cut off. See, there's that sacrifice in places that aren't where I tell you to sacrifice and you're cut off. Eat blood and you're cut off. Disobey my statutes and you're cut off. We like to think we can do whatever we want in our Western mind whenever we want, but we forget that God makes these determinations, not us. He tells us them in his word, and, and we're to listen to them. We're to heed them. So it doesn't matter. And if you, if you um, eat something that has died or that has been torn apart by beasts, then you are to wash your clothes and yourself in water. Uh, but you're still ceremonially unclean until evening, and then, then you're clean basically the next day. Um, but if you don't wash, then you then it's a sin, and, and you bear that iniquity to be atoned for on the Day of Atonement. Blood is so important. I mean, that's what Christ gives us. He gives us his blood to drink, his body to eat. On the cross, his blood is shed. In our liturgy, we say, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we declare the Lord's death until he comes to claim us, right? The blood is a declaration of death. When the spear pierces Jesus' side, from his side pours out water and blood, that which gives birth to his bride, the church, the sacrament of baptism and the sacrament of the Holy Supper. The blood is important. It's important to us today. I mean, even a, even a, a, a disease of anemia, when your blood becomes weak, um, when you haven't got enough blood, uh, it becomes important. Blood is our life. Blood is important to the Lord. And it has been given in Christ as a gift for you to atone for your sins. His blood shed upon the cross for you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your deep compassion, in your deep compassion, you rescue us from whatever may hurt us. Teach us to love you above all things and to love our neighbors as ourselves. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this day, this Thursday morning, Lord Jesus Christ, I marvel at your wondrous love for me, which is new again today. All throughout my life, I have been unfaithful to you. I have idolatrously chased my evil thoughts and desires. I have adulterously loved the things of the world more than I have loved you. But still you have chosen me, you have given yourself to death for me. You have cleansed me through the water and word in my baptism. Thank you for making me part of your beautiful and radiant bride, the church, which you purchased with your own blood. As your church, help us live in the light of your cross, scatter the darkness of division, strife, hostility, grudges, stubbornness, laziness, apathy and heresy that so often plague and hinder us. Let us bask in your merciful presence as we gather around your holy word and sacraments each week. Allow us to sorrow together, rejoice together, and forgive one another. Guard and protect me from neglecting and despising your word and your people. Give me a fervent desire to come to your church each week. Teach me to treasure your word and sacraments. Let me hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Feed me with your life-giving, sin-forgiving, body and blood. Enable me to taste and see that you are good. Strengthen my faith. Help me look to you alone for forgiveness, life, and salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those who suffer in body, mind, or soul. Strengthen those who are sick, those who suffer for whatever reason. Give strength to those who need healing, comfort to those whose life is fading. Lord, help those who long for you to hear your word of promise and comfort. Especially this day, we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Larry, Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Brianne, Ashley, Susie, Don, Bob, Megan, and all who call upon your most holy name, that by faith in you and by your promise, they might be given strength for each and every day of their lives. 
until you come to claim them as your own. This I ask and we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you know that I love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, help me to understand that if I love you, I must love my neighbor too. The world around me is often indifferent toward the poor and prejudiced and against those who are of another race or authenticity. Erase from my heart all thoughts of pride and prejudice and give me a spirit of tolerance and goodwill toward all. Help me to be more than merely tolerant. Help me to love those who are in need of love, no matter who they may be. Keep me aware that you have created them all of one blood to live on this earth. And that you have sent your only begotten Son into the world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Forbid that I should ever, by any intolerant word or deed, offend anyone you have loved, and for whom your Son, my Savior, has died. Teach me, by your Holy Spirit, to be more like you with every passing day in loving all my neighbors. Let the spirit of humility and tolerance increase among all people, that we may live together in this world in peace and goodwill. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin and our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah, so... God's blessings, my friends. We'll see you back here tomorrow live for our daily devotions at uh, uh, Same Bad Time, Same Bad Channel uh, here on Facebook. But for today, God's peace be with you, and we'll see you Friday morning.